So for five minutes, we're going to talk about something real important here, and that's traffic control, temporary traffic control. The reason it's so important now is because all the distracted driving out there, primarily the cell phones. So the key is if you're going to be in a traffic area, you really need to grab the attention of the driver as soon as you can. So in a temporary traffic control, there's four zones. We're only going to talk about this one primarily, but the four zones are advance warning, the transition area where you're starting to divert traffic, the activity area where you guys are working, which is critical, and then you have the um, termination area where the traffic's getting back to normal. Okay. So what we want to talk about today is, is the advanced warning area. So if you're in a residential area like 25 miles per hour, you could get away really with a utility work ahead sign about 100 feet before where you're working. And that's okay, but that's about the only place it's okay. Once you get up to say 30 miles per hour or more, you really need to go to at least three signs. All right, the first one's gonna be that there's work ahead, and in your case, it's utility work. Be prepared to stop because there's going to be a flagger there uh, right here to stop the traffic to one lane. Uh, and then your flagger symbol that gives them the warning that you got a flagger standing here because these guys are in the most danger right here. Right? So as much warning as you can give to the work area is better for you guys to stay safe. The distance between the signs is based on speed limit. It's usually the speed limit times four to eight feet. All right, so if it's 30, a minimum 120 feet apart, basically, it's easy math. As far as tapering the traffic, diverting the traffic, the cones that you're using is also based on speed. And there's a formula for that. It's the width of the taper times the speed zone through here, the speed limit through here, divided by 60. I don't know how they come up with that, but that's the formula. So that's how far apart the cones should be. And then at the very end, you should have a end work zone sign. That way the drivers know that they're out of the danger area, you guys are out of the way. One other important thing is, is since you guys are working here, there's a buffer space where you should have nothing trucks, equipment, people, nothing should be in this zone right here. So that is to keep you guys safe. As far as the signage, there's two legal signs here in the state of Texas. Um, the first one being this vinyl right here. And that's daytime use only. It has no reflectivity, but it's got that bright orange to catch the driver's attention. If you're going to do anything at night, or anything overcast early morning, the reflective sign over there is called super bright, and that's legal for all night long. Probably the safest thing would be to go ahead and get that anyway and, and use all the time to be the best thing. Um, let me see. This is not federally approved mesh. It's, it's not a federal approved, you see this everywhere. People use it all the time, but it's not really legal. Um, so, you know, if there were an accident in the work zone, that could come back to bite you. Um, so, uh, and then as far as the flaggers themselves, there's certification courses that people should go through to become a flagger. Uh, you can find those online uh, in a lot of places. So I recommend that as well. Again, the main thing is give everybody plenty of warning uh, that there's a work zone ahead. Interstates is 1,500 feet up to a half mile warning. 